this has been an abject failure to solve one of the three positions that we knew we needed going into this window is absolutely unacceptable and i'm going to take you through my thoughts on why the can has once again been kicked down the road and people like ian doyle are going to try and belittle the rest of us for daring to have some ambition trying to paint us all as some bunch of lunatics that want to be chelsea no no we will go through that and I will give you exactly my reasoning why I don't trust these owners in the transfer market. I'm not going to tell anybody else how to feel. You are all free to have your own thoughts. But for me, it's unacceptable and it's something that we knew was going to happen. We warned about it all window and here we are at the end of the window with nothing happening. Shocked? No. It's exactly what we knew was going to happen because John W. Henry and FSG are cheap. John W. Henry and FSG don't want to win. John W. Henry and FSG have fooled so many people for so long, but it's about time that those who haven't had a voice have a voice, and I'm going to try my best to articulate exactly why we believe we've been left short. Right, Bricktop, thank you for gifting five membership, mate. I really appreciate that, and thank you so much. Look, the objectives going into this... Actually, do you know what? Firstly, let me just bring this up on screen for you because I think this will make it all a little bit easier to explain. So this is what Ian Doyle of The Echo has had to say about his fellow Liverpool fans, or Liverpool fans in general. Just got out of a Blood Red Live podcast. There was a lot of angry Liverpool fans on it who hate FSG, and some would sooner the club was like Chelsea and Man United. Anyway, Stefan Bajcetic, season-long loan to Red Bull Salzburg, confirmed. So, Ian, you arrogant little, little man, let me explain to you why you can't simply just vilify your fellow Liverpool fans or the Liverpool fans who are the readers of, if there's any left, of the Echo. I'm going to tell you why you're very, very wrong. This isn't about wanting to be Chelsea or Manchester United. And I would argue that there was probably nobody in the comments of the Blood Red podcast asking Liverpool to become Chelsea. We all know what a mess Chelsea is, and we all know how poorly run Manchester United have been. But here's the thing, Ian. You write for a publication to represent the city of Liverpool, even though it's printed in Manchester, and represent and give a voice to Liverpool fans. What you continue to do is not be objective in your reporting, to be a shill, to simply parrot what the club want put out there in the hope that of course you get that little john w henry interview once every two years where basically let's be honest Dean, he comes along gives you a little pat on the head tells you you're a good boy and we all go about our business you and every other journalist covered this transfer window and let us all know what the ambitions were going into the window i didn't make it up the fans that you're looking to piss all over didn't make it up it was put out there that liverpool needed a center back a central midfielder and a utility forward. Now, Ian, objectively, have we achieved those aims? I think the answer you're looking for is no. I'm not going to give you a get out of jail free card where I stand here, sit here and mock you. I'm going to give you the facts of the situation and why I and many other Liverpool fans are sick of being vilified and looked down upon by the likes of you who are supposed to be a journalist. When you went to college to become a journalist, is this what you wanted to become? a shill who simply parrots a club's opinion and has no objectivity your job is to ask the difficult questions your job is to represent your readers and you are either unwilling or unable to do that so fan channels like myself have had to step up and say what you want these owners are purposely not spending money to strengthen the team these owners have told us on many times that they want to under promise and over deliver i ask you ian have they over delivered in this transfer window so rather than mock liverpool fans and call them clowns who want to be like chelsea fans or manchester united how about just thinking about it objectively in this window, one of the three additions that we were looking to bring in has been done. The club have once again been embarrassed in the transfer market by the fourth player who has refused to join to become Liverpool's number six. And I don't know what school you went to, Ian, but for me, four players turning down Liverpool Football Club is not a good look. The media in Spain mocking and laughing at Liverpool and Zubamendi not coming is not a good look. Be objective. Ask, are these owners really doing everything? Or do you just like feeling superior to others? 
because that is what I've had to be up against for the last year. Rather than explain to us why we're wrong, it's far easier to punch down, isn't it? It's far easier to punch down to fans than explain why they're wrong. When has non-communication ever, ever worked? Divisiveness is what feeds contempt. We need to come together and talk about these issues. So if you believe that Liverpool fans who dare to question the owners are wrong, explain why rather than vilifying them and taking the lazy route out. I will happily debate anybody at any time and any place about why I believe these owners are abject and why I believe these owners have pulled the wool over our eyes, ranging from the Super League to the furloughing of staff to the £77 tickets and many other things that you seem unable or unwilling to comprehend that my fellow fans are annoyed about. Do you not think, looking around at this transfer window, where we haven't strengthened and we have added one fringe player in in Chiesa who was competition for the front line, on its own, a fantastic deal. Taking it in the object nature that we're supposed to, no problem with it. Good value, good wages, good deal. Same with Mamre Dashvili. But what you again fail to understand is we have failed to go into the window and execute our plans. Excuses are just that. And Liverpool fans Ian, are sick of them. We're sick of being told about a bright promise down the line or a bright future or the promise of signings in the next window. They never materialise. We are manipulated, we are lied to and we are fed up. And if you are unable to comprehend that Ian, then I'm sorry mate, but you've got bigger problems. So stop vilifying the rest of us. I am well able to articulate my position. But the problem is, accounts and echo based journalists just blank us. Don't even give us time. Don't even give us a voice. So we've created our own platform. And I am going to be that voice for fans who feel vilified. I am going to be that voice who stands up for fans and calls out the owners. Not because we want to be like Chelsea or Manchester United. Because we had a taste of success and we want it again. We grew up knowing Liverpool exists to win trophies. We grew up seeing Crazy Horse Phil Thompson and many others lifting that European Cup above their head. So why now all of a sudden is ambition an ugly word? Over to you, Ian. But as always, I expect nothing from you because you haven't got the backbone to even acknowledge our existence on Anfield Agenda. So you can keep quiet and continue on laughing and mocking and looking down at people, but we're building a community here with a voice and these fans need to be heard whether you like it or not. So, my friends, that's how I feel about Mr. Doyle and anybody else who is unobjective and refuses to acknowledge what the rest of us see. This isn't about us being FIFA fans. This isn't about us playing fantasy manager. This is about us looking at what our competition are doing, looking at what our contemporaries are doing and asking, why have FSG gone into another transfer window and made a profit? Made a profit. 